about um, you know 20 minutes into the talk or so, uh, screen will go blank because I mean the camera shuts off um, half an hour into the after being turned on to prevent overheating. I just need to turn it back on. It will continue working. Don't panic. Talk will continue. Okay. Um, the third thing, uh, and possibly the most important thing, is that what I'm going to say is based on a joint work um, with uh, uh, Ting Wei Chao, who is a graduate student here at CMU, uh, and Ron Holzman, who is in the audience. Uh, you, uh, you can all see uh, Ron's uh, face, at least in the middle of my screen. I'm not sure about your screen. OK. Um, so let me start. Uh, uh, I will start with something called nets. Again, the word nets means a variety of different things uh, in mathematics. The kind of nets that I will talk about, um, they originated in really in American analysis. Uh, I mean, again, kind of now probably closer to what we would call discrepancy theory. So. Um, What's the, what's, the motiv what's the motivation? Where did they come from in numerical analysis land? The, the problem is that of numerical integration. So you have some function f, which you um, given to you somehow, maybe some complicated expression, maybe you use a, a, a blackboard computation. Uh, and you want to estimate or compute of some way uh, an integral of this, and the, uh, of this function over some, let's say, nice domain, like I say, a box. And the, uh, again, if we, barring the cases where okay, you can actually symbolically integrate the function, the normal thing to do is you compute this function at some points, and then you aggregate those simulations in some uh, approximation. Okay. Again, there are various assumptions you can need to make of a function, but should not probably vary too much, etc. It's a huge, huge subject which I'll not even try to serve it. Okay. I'll just zoom in onto one little piece of this of the of the subject so um, and the piece I want to zoom in is that is that of high dimensional uh, integrals so um, so again I will draw my pictures will be in two dimensions um, just from limit because of limitations of the medium um, so I will just draw pictures in in, in, the, in the plane so this is this is a zero one box I have a function defined one way is so you can think of a, a double integral as a iterated single integral. So in other words, it's integral of integrals. So if you have some good way of computing a single one-dimensional integral, so you would think it's the good way of integrate of computing the two-dimensional integrals would be just use it twice. So for example, imagine if you you were computed your single uh, well, uh, variable integral by computing say points one third and two thirds. Then what you would do in two dimensions, you would compute it in this in this two by two grid. Okay. Okay, that's what that's what that's what we look what you do. This is uh, this is not a terribly good idea as dimension uh, increases. Uh, the re the intuitive reason, and uh, again, I, I, I will stay at this level, is that if you have a big box and you're computing. Uh, on some kind of uh, function, on some kind of grid, and it's not important what kind of grid exactly, then what you might miss is that a function might vary on some long and thin strip. Okay? That's, uh, you, your, your samples will not see that variation. And, I, and uh, and, and it turns out that a good way um, to choose um, sample points is to make sure that you're actually going to hit all the uh, reasonably large, say, boxes. I mean, a pro uh, basically correct number of times. So this leads to the notion of a net. Okay, so let me um, define what I would call a net. Okay, so first let's. This is the usual definition of a net. So uh, TMD net or me, TMD net is a set inside um, 
a unit box in, uh, in this space. Um, of size, okay, uh, two of them, again, that's uh, such that every dyadic box, okay, I'll explain what I mean by that, I mean, uh, box of volume, uh, by the way, if people have difficulty seeing what I'm writing or hearing what I'm saying, there are some technical, there are some settings they can tweak uh, to make things uh, better. So just let me know also. Because technology sometimes um, doesn't behave the way it should. Okay, so of the uh, of volume, uh, uh, of volume two to the T over size of X contains uh, two to the T points. So this is this is kind of this is the definition you will find in the literature if you look at the you know, in, the, in in the literature on uh, uh, discrepancy theory or numer on numerical analysis. Uh, this is what the net how do you define it? Okay, so now what is this? so this number? Uh, so so if you so a box of volume constant over size of x on average will contain that constant many points. And this says that, in fact, every special box uh, will indeed contain exactly correct number of points. So, okay, dyadic means exactly what you think. So, dyadic, dyadic means that it's of the form a to some uh, t a to the t times b uh, to the a1, since I have a bunch of coordinates, A2, C2, A2 plus 1, C2, etc. So this is just a product of dyadic integrals. It's exactly what you would like to call dyadic. Okay. Okay, and uh, there, are, there are a bunch of results in literature saying about if you have such a construction, you can compute certain things, for example, like you know, you can approximate integrals of functions in certain class with certain kind of error, etc. And not only integrals, but other computation, uh, computational problems you could solve. Okay, so um, the there are really uh, what? Okay, so so you should think of dimension for being large but fixed. You know, okay, this kind of what you think. The parameter m for this talk, you should think basically, it just so it says, you know, how big your set x is, and we want to make it, you know, arbitrarily large. So what we want, we want to find constructions for some fixed t and d and arbitrary large m. And now uh, for a given dimension, t, t is really a quality parameter. So the smaller t is, the better your construction is because it guarantees uniform distribution in the, in the smaller boxes. And of course, if, I, if, if my set uh, is uniformly distributed in the smaller boxes, it's also uniformly distributed in larger boxes as well. So, so the game is uh, for, for a given D, find a sm a T as small as you can, uh, so that for all M, you can make such an object. Okay. So, Um, so here is a, basically a state of the art result um, in this direction. So this is single needle writer. Uh, I, I am not, I did not make mistake with the uh, order of the names. This is how they appear in the paper. I don't know why. Um, so it says that in particular that um, the um, there is some uh, some um, some t which is linear, um, so it's at most um, approximately five s. Again, the actual bound appearing in paper is slightly more precise, but this is really a simplistic. 
So there is a Tn which is no more than 5s, such that for all m, um, there is a Cm, oh, sorry, S, D. I apologize. Because in, the, in, in literature, often they use S to denote dimension. TMD map. OK. So in other words, if I uh, now, the, I want to know basically that the, um, the size of the box is exponenti exponentiated. So this is, this is 2 to the T. So in other words, if I look at a box, which is exponentially larger um, than dimension, then uh, and it will, I'll have a uniformity on that, on that scale. OK. And this is essentially best possible. So this is um, there's a theorem of Schurer. OK. Slightly thicker results are easier to prove by hand. Um, but so what Schurer says it, um, is that you need to have t to be at least something like s of minus log s. Okay. Uh, getting linear lower bound is fairly easy. Getting uh, constant one in front is harder, which is what you already. But so up to this constant, this uh, this is best you could do. So um, a new result that I want to tell you um, here is a theorem. So this is um, okay. Uh, this is joined with uh, Chow. Um, but with uh, some uh, help with uh, uh, from Ron, um, is that um, there exists uh, something which is almost like a net. So instead of uh, uh, um, containing exactly correct number of points, it contains almost correct number of points. So here is the statement. Um, so let M be any parameter. Again, dimension be also anything you want. Um, there is an, um, sorry, there is an, let me just make sure I'm getting it. Okay, no, sorry, let me just make it parameter set uh, L. Um, there is a, uh, an arbitrary, there is an arbitrary, there are arbitrary, there's an arbitrary large set. So as long as you, as long as you, as large as you want, arbitrarily large P uh, such that uh, I, sorry, I it. such that every um, the adding box of uh, volume uh, L over X. Contains basically expected number of points. So it contains L points with an error, which is the big O of the square root D log D over L. Okay. So in particular, if you take L to be something like D log D or something bigger. You can make a relative error um, as, as small as you want. So it's a, like little of one. So that means, again, you, we are looking at the boxes which are, which whose size is only polynomially larger than one over x, as opposed to be exponentially larger than one over x. OK, so this is, this is a new construction. And um, I am, um, though it would be nice for me to claim that we, now we can integrate uh, functions better, I can't quite yet claim that. Um, as in, I think we can make some improvements, but not of very significant kind. Uh, but the application I do want to tell you about is to a discrete uh, geometry. So, and hopefully I will have time to tell you what application is and tell a little bit about construction. Um, any questions at this point? All right. 
Okay, so the application is to uh, the camera going black thing happened. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let me get to it back. Should be back now. So the application is to, is uh, is in uh, it's in discrete geometry and okay Ramsey part of it. So um, let me tell you, it's, here's a, a classic result of Ordish Sakharov. That uh, for every k. And again, every D, if you have a large enough point set in R to the D is large enough. When I say large enough, it's large enough as a function of K and D. Um, and in general position, so which is to say that uh, no D and uh, no D plus one points lie on uh, hyperplane, so no no unusual uh, affine dependencies. Um, then there exists um, a k a k element subset. There exists a k element uh, set S inside P um, that is in convex position. In convex position. So, which is to say, no point of S is in a convex hull of the remaining points of S. Okay, so this is a well known application of Ramsey's theorem. And again, or some arguments which are more direct, but okay, this is classic. And uh, um, there is a slightly more refined notion that of a hole. So we call um, S inside P is a hole in P if uh, not only it's in convex position, but also uh, the convex hull contains no other points. So if S is Convex position. And if I look at the convex hull of S, well, there's nothing else inside than S. So it's S intersect P, that's just S. The, uh, so there, uh, so Ordish asked the question whether it can strengthen. Uh, well, to dimensional version of this result, to a statement of power finding holes, okay, the answer turned out to be no. So there is a um, uh, or, um, Horton uh, constructed uh, uh, set, sets in the plane, so there exist arbitrarily large sets in the plane without seven holes. Um, and the number seven turned out to be sharp. So um, that uh, was uh, done independently um, by uh, Gherkin and, um, oh my God, I don't think I wrote it down. So, uh, sorry, maybe wrong remembers. Sorry, it escaped me for a second. I apologize. So the seven is sharp. Uh, and in general, one can look at the quantity, which is what's the best value of seven in dimension D. So H of D, it's the maximum, um, uh, so it's a minimum number, uh, minimum H um, such that there exist 
arbitrarily large um, sets in R to the D without H holes. So, for example, Horton's result says that H of, sorry, I did it before. I think I, I made it, okay, h of 2 is 7, and in, in general, uh, so, okay, so, Horton's law says, no, h of 7, h of 2 is at most 7, and the, in fact, h of 2 is 7, the, the, so the only other work on this was Dr. Walter, who gave a bound on H, which is asymptotically um, behaves like de factorial. So it's it's really a pro a product of force d primes times some extra factors. So this is because that behaves like de factorial. The lower bound, we don't have any good lower bounds. So the only lower bound we have is uh, 2D uh, plus two. That's um, the only lower bound we have, so it's linear. And so what should it be? Uh, and this new construction of nets, what it uh, allows us to do is to make a new construction. So this is now a theorem with uh, myself, Ting Wei Chao, and Ron Holzman. Um, which allows us to bound the size of the holes to uh, four to the D times uh, polynomial in D. I want to point, I want to mention that again, that the, ro the role, there are, there are two kinds of uh, ideas in, in this result. Uh, one idea is how to connect the nets or an Elmas nets to this problem in, the, in, um, uh, in discrete geometry. And the second idea is, uh, well, why, why do Elmas, uh, why Elmas nets are useful? And um, so the, the first idea is having a connection. So if you just, if you take the uh, sing and you write a result, you can get a result which is still improves on Walters, but you're going to get a much larger base of exponent here. Um, and to get this nice, nice base of exponent, which is, again, I can tell you a little bit more about, uh, this is where you need to get to, uh, to use this nicer new Ilmas nets, which I again, I want to talk about. Okay. So this is the application I had moment replacement. Then let me uh, say a few words about the connection um, between um, these two problems about the problem of constructing nets and the problem um, of constructing sets without large holes. And then I will. Uh, tell you a bit about how do we actually construct them. We have a question in the chat. Yeah, please just uh, unmute yourself and ask because I, I don't see the chat. So I can read it unless Kevin wants to say it. Hi, Boris. Yeah. Sorry, it took a moment to unmute myself. Uh, I was just, I have no intuition for this problem. Would you mind giving a few examples of like things that have a few holes in them? Uh, things that have what? A few holes in them. Like for instance, what is this extremal example in R2 and- 
Okay, that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So let me maybe, so I, I will I will tell you both the construction of a net in, in art in, in the plane in the unit square and see basically how it relates to the construction of the a set without, without seven holes. Okay, so, and this is exactly what I want to do now. Great, Sounds good. Okay. So what, um, so here is the construction of a set um, with, which is a net in the, in the union square. So uh, given a number M, so a number here, okay, given an integer M, I'm going to write it in binary. So I'll take M and I'm going to write it um, in binary as, as follows. So it has the a0, a1, a2, and it lets me assume it has some t digits in binary. Then I'm going to reverse its digits uh, uh, to obtain the number whose binary expansion, is, so it's, it's number between zero and one, whose binary expansion is, is reverse of the binary expansion of M. So, and I denote this new number R, R2. Okay. So now this, uh, the net, uh, which, you can uh, which you can define is a set of points of the form M divided by two to the T comma R2, of M divided by two to the T. And again, this M will range from zero to the two to the T minus one. Okay, let me draw the set. I mean, the, the definition is definitely not an intuitive definition, but the picture should hopefully make it clear what is going on. So the, if I if I take t to if I take t to be well um, uh, zero, um, if I take t to be equals to zero, then I'm going to get uh, uh, just uh, uh, this point set, two point set. If I take t point equals to two, what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this point set, and I'm going to uh, uh, copy, uh, I'm going to uh, copy it. Well, so this is my midline, horizontal midline, and this is my horizontal midline. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, uh, copy it, make to take two copies of it, put one copy on the top like this, and put another copy on the bottom like this. So what I'm doing, I am, uh, I'm uh, uh, the points, the points are alternating that belong to the bottom half and the top half. So, so top, bottom, top, bottom, and, and and inside each top half and the bottom half, I put the copies of my set. So next next uh, construction would be basically take this construction uh, partition to two halves. And again, I'll put another copy, picture, copy of this in here, another picture of here, copy of things like this, and I alternate the x coordinates. This is how my set looks like. Um, the the cons corresponding construction of the corresponding construction of the seven without holes, large holes will look as follows. So if I have a, uh, if I have a, um, a point whose x coordinate it has uh, uh, a binary expansion a0 through at, and the y coordinates can be zero to bt. Again, in this particular construction, of course, the A's are just reversal of B's, but the connection goes in full generality. Then I take such a pair 
x, y, and I map it to the uh, point we, uh, uh, in the plane which, uh, whose x coordinate is going to be, let's call it capital X, a0, so I'm just, I was just, it's a linear map, a t, goes as follows. So AT is small, much smaller than AT minus 1, much smaller than A1, much smaller than A0, so, uh, which in turn, and this is, these are smaller than the B's, B1. Okay, so again, in so the way the set looks like, again, it's an iterative, you know, if you take start from this net and you want to and apply this transformation, then you start with the again, two point set, then you take uh, again two copies, so this is like, let's say zero and one, x coordinate, this is zero, one is going to be somewhere here, this, and then two will be here, three is going to be way up there. So again, and the way up there meaning, and this is a huge distance. Okay, so this is how the set will look like. The, idea behind the construction is that if you're interested in the convex hull of some set of points, for example, maybe you want to understand the convex hull of the, these three points, since this distance is huge, like you should really imagine, okay, you have this picture and this thing is way over there. So in that case, this the straight line going from here to here, it will go almost vertically down here, right? So this is how it will look like. So this is so this is this is how convex hull will look like. So the convex hull, say the vertical part, you know, and will be basically we will obtain essentially by extruding the convex hull between those points just downward in this example. So in general, if you if you trace out through uh, through the basically what happens in general, you will always your convex house will be obtained by extruding convex hull of the pieces. So you will get some kind of boxes. Again, you, I'm not going to work out for, for all the relation, but essentially this operation will make your convex house look like boxes. And the definition of a net tells you that, you know, in each box you have the expected number of points. So that, that means if you take a convex hull of some set of points, and if you know the volume of respective box, you can say that this box is not empty and contains a point because it has expected number of points. This is the, this is the connection. Okay. I have not convinced, uh, told you why this construction in particular is a, um, is a net. I just asserted so. Um, the, and let me not tell you directly why this construction is this net. Let me instead tell you why a certain related minor modification of that construction is a net. I mean, it's a, has a similar net-like property. Okay. Uh, by the way, I want to basically, before I move, I want to check at least with Kevin that he and others are happy with my explanation or what. Admittedly, I'm a little lost, but I'm thinking about it. Please, please continue. Okay, as you, as you wish. Okay, so 
or maybe let me uh, uh, give a uh, you know, construction of, an, uh, of a net like object which is um, slightly more symmetric than this net, but again, but requires a little bit more writing. So we, I define this uh, binary digit reversal operation, which is denoted by R2. I, in a similar way, I can define a reversal on any base. So for example, if I take my number M, um, I write it in, uh, in ternary, The, or any base P. So it's base P reversal um, will be, oops, sorry, I wanted the other, I wanted this. Sorry, it's base P reversal will be the number in base P, uh, which is obtained by writing the number in reverse. Again, this is in base P. So much a similar net, which is uh, uh, which, I, which is much easier to explain why it's a net, is the set of uh, where I'm reversing the digits both in the x coordinates and 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 in the y coordinates. So this is three, uh, two to the two to the t um, r three say m. Um, two to the S, two to the S, goes N, goes N, M, we say going between one and N. Okay, this is not quite a net, but this is very close to a net, and it's very easy to explain why it's an M of the net. Okay. So, Picture my my house. So this is this is my box in the plane. Now, instead of dyadic boxes, you know, since I'm going to do reversal base two in x coordinate and reversal in the base three in y coordinate, I mean, what I'm looking I'm looking at the uh, boxes which are in x coordinate are dyadic intervals, and in the y coordinate they are ternary interval. So basically they are, um, it's y coordinates are adjacent. I, the denominator is a power of three and it's adjacent um, uh, integers in the numerator. So an example, for example, I can, this is my zero, this is a half, this is one, this is zero, one third, two third, one. So for example, this, box here, it's a, again, um, an elementary box for this kind of construction. Um, and if I'm and now, so if I'm interested now to know how many uh, points of this set fall inside the box, well, I just need to see how many values of M uh, so as such, if I reverse the digit the, uh, of m, the, uh, the most significant digit will be one uh, in binary, and the most significant digit internally will be zero. Well, that's condition on the least significant digits in uh, binary and ternary respectively. So for example, the, the sets which fall into this particular box are those which satisfy the con uh, congruence conditions that m uh, in base two, uh, mod, mod two is one, and mod um, three is zero. Okay. So the set of set of such values of m form an arithmetic progression, and the number uh, so we, uh, of step six, and we we interested in how many of them fall inside an interval one through n. And of course, the answer is basically the number you expect. And of course, if the n is divisible by six, 
literally the number you expect. But that's okay. This is this is nothing new. And um, of course, this kind of construction generalizes to constructions of nets. I mean, again, if you don't worry about base two, base three difference um, in any dimension. And the parameters of these constructions will be actually uh, worse than the, the that seeing the, the writer construction. And this is like well-known construction, um, half and Hammerstein construction of, of digital net. So our new construction basically takes this same idea and just makes a twist on this um, uh, by as, which is as follows. So let so before I explain the twist, let me explain. Um, what is um, two things? Well, one is why uh, why this construction is. Um, uh, doesn't do well in higher dimensions. So the primary reason it doesn't do well in higher dimensions is because if you take, so if you, you have to use larger and larger, larger primes, which is you know, two, three, five, et cetera, if I'll go higher dimensions. And if you're interested in the behavior of say dyadic boxes or like some boxes of some fixed, then you will need to basically uh, make sure that your dyadic box can, uh, is made of Bo uh, of these uh, boxes of appropriate denominator. Okay, so let me just, so first of all, imagine for the sake of discussion that all primes are powers of two. I know this is not true, but it, it's almost true. So then if you have a dyadic box and you know that, uh, so it, its coordinates are, are powers of two, then uh, in order to say something about it, you will need to make sure it's actually, you can say something about boxes which is a powers of four or powers of eight or whatever the power is. So you're actually going to lose some factors as you're going to be shrinking your boxes. Okay, so this is, this is the, where the loss uh, is coming from. Um, okay, and as, as to this uh, counterfactual statement, you can actually make it essentially true by switching from um, the Euclidean setting to the setting of function field. So again, so what you can do, you can do the same construction so, uh, by replacing the integers uh, by polynomials in the single variable, say over F2, and the usual uh, primes Primes replacing by uh, irreducible polynomials. And then uh, this, we can still talk about writing polynomial in, in base P, where P is a reducible polynomial. And okay, so if I have F. I want to reverse a P that's irreducible. I can still reverse the digits um, um, AT. What can I can do AT? Um, a uh, uh, T, uh, T minus one. Sorry, I'm oh, sorry, let me just try that. A zero plus a one. Again, uh, let's just do some kind of map. A one uh, uh, of s, etc. So what I'm, but, but what we still what we can oh sorry. let me just take, draw a picture. So if uh, we can still use the same trick. So namely we are going to use the least significant digit. So again, we're going to have some map M, which takes uh, 
polynomials of degree at most degree of p to uh, just digits, binary digits. Not, not saying it well. I apologize. We should argue the domain of. Okay. Uh, is camera on working? I have no uh, idea. No, it's black again. It's black. Oh, now it's working. Let me check. It's working? Okay. Yeah, now so, it is. So what we do, we can do, we can do the same trick. We can so we reverse the digits in the base P expansion of polynomial, and then we identify individual digits, which you can, we can write as a binary numbers of certain length and reversing their order in the same manner. Okay. Now the main idea of, which again, I, I want to hope to explain is, uh, is this is how to uh, go? Is what to do about uh, about boxes which are not um, bad? So, let so let me just okay. Let me just explain this question summation. So what I'm doing? So a a i is a polynomial in f of x of degree at most s where where s is degree of p then i can i can take uh, any map i like from such instead of such polynomials to uh, the numbers uh, from zero to the uh, two to the s minus one, and then the reversal of f is just m of uh, a zero times two to the negative s plus m one times two to the negative two s uh, plus m a two, etc. So it's a set. So again, so the, the least significant digit again dictates the most significant digit in of not of F dictates the most significant digit of reversal. The next significant, next most significant, etc. Okay, so I wait, is video frozen? Because I'm I'm I seeing on my own screen it I, it looks frozen. It's, it's slightly frozen. laggy. Something laggy. Okay, geez. Okay, yeah, now it's more laggy. I don't read. Ah. Can you see the, okay. okay. It's laggy, okay. okay. Given there are two minutes in the field. Okay, should be better now, but I cannot guarantee. Okay. All right. Um, yes. So, okay. Um, at this point, okay, I have maybe a couple of minutes left. I think at this point, let me just say uh, the what the main idea is, is that we would like to understand basically how the boxes, which are not the powers of this number S behave. And essentially what we do, we are, okay, yeah, with this, I see the video and it seems to be almost frozen, sorry. Okay, let me stop at this point because again, with video like this, I don't think I will be able to continue and the two minutes. Okay, sorry, let me just maybe s slow down and kind of wrap up rather than give me more details. Okay, so the idea of the construction is to classify the, the way 
the different boxes can work. So for example, in this construction, the what we do, we have a, a the points inside each of the each of these elementary um, boxes correspond to the inter intersections of the systemic mean progression with an interval. So, so the um, if if in Euclidean world, what we are looking we are looking at some progression, so some well, some kind of form like this, and we intersect it with an interval, and that that thing is contains the right number of points usually but then there's some but the larger the step d the more error you introduce and the idea is to replace the set one for n by a different set which is really a, a, a some set of some much shorter interval so with some a random set x to so jumble it up so, and then basically you take the union bound over all possible progressions. And again, progressions, again, you, but prog progressions can fall into some small number of classes because you really, you don't really know, you need to know exactly what progression is. You can approximate each progression by some nearby number. So you can, you only have a small bounded number of classes and now, and you can, you can, you can, so that allows you to, uh, um, control what's happening onto the progressions, which are, which are, well, otherwise you would not be able to control. Okay, that's as much as I can say. And then you, uh, to get the result about the Elmas nets, you know, in the binary, rather than this kind of mixed expansion, two, three, and so on, you need to switch to the function fields and do the same argument. It's again, it's not actually any different. It's literally the same argument. You just uh, go according to the dictionary and you will you'll get the result okay okay i think at this point um between the video is not working that well and i'm running out of time i think it's best for me to stop and uh, and and hand over to the questions so uh, thank you for listening and sorry for all the mishaps